Hey guys, thanks for downloading the latest episode of the Obsessive Viewer Podcast. Uh, this is Matt. Just want to let you know ahead of time that this is the first half of our uh, fall season finale. Um, we're doing um, two episodes devoted to Christmas themed movies and TV shows. Um, this episode is devoted to the TV side of things, so we talk about Christmas themed TV episodes and specials. Um, so I hope you like it. If you do, if TV's not your thing, you can. Um, look for the second episode which will be dropping here in a couple days you can find it at ovpodcast.com and on itunes um speaking of itunes it's the holidays if you're looking if you're in the giving mood you can go ahead and rate us and write us a quick review uh it really helps out a lot and also if you could uh, head over to podcastland.com which is also just generally speaking a great a great website um, where you can find a lot of little known podcasts and like indie podcasts and, uh, it's just really great, but they have a podcast of the month contest. If you vote for us, it's, it's really quick and simple. All you gotta do is give them the email, give them your email, click a confirmation code in the email, and then that's it. They don't send you any email or anything like that, um, unless you vote again. Uh, but it's a really great, really great, uh, website and, uh, we really appreciate your votes. Um, and then lastly, you can also check out our friends at the Nerds You're Looking For podcast. I'm actually going to be guesting on, on their show soon. And, uh, and it's just, it's a really good podcast that our friend Pat and, uh, Tyler, our friends Pat and Tyler, I don't know Tyler personally, but our friends Pat and Tyler, they, they host it and they're really great, uh, really great guys. And, uh, they actually just released their first bonus episode that's all about Pat's, uh, first foray into stand up comedy. Uh, which was really great. We're really proud of him. He did a really good job, and um, I'm really looking forward to seeing where he goes with that, um, which if you're in the Evansville area, you can check out his stand-up at the Joke Factory on January 6th. That's part of their Make Me Laugh competition. Um, so yeah, that's enough announcements. Uh, here's our Christmas TV discussion. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Okay. All right. <clears throat> Fa la 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 la. <laughs> <laughs> the hell? I don't know. <laughs> you just getting into the Christmas mood? I have no idea. It's cold in here. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little, we're a little giddy. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Welcome to the first part of the Obsessive Viewer uh, fall season finale. I just, I was waving my hands around and stuff and Tiny was looking at me kind of weird. It was working on me. Nice, nice. Um, so this is part one of our two-part season finale in which we were talking about Christmas on uh, Christmas on the screen, pretty much. This one, this episode is devoted to, or this portion is devoted to Christmas on TV, um, and then and then later in the week we'll release our Christmas movie episode for our to close out the season and the year actually. So, uh, of course, as always, I'm Matt. Uh, at Obsessive Viewer, and joining me today is Tiny at Obsessive Tiny and Mike at I am Mike White. Hello, guys. What's up? Hi. Merry Christmas. Now, yes. Merry Christmas to you guys. You have to promise me, Matt, that you will put uh, like sleigh bells at the beginning of this. Ooh, totally. I like that. You yeah. know? It's a must. Nice. Yeah. Do you think Star Tissue will make like a Christmas song for us? You could just use that. Just cut that and and. Play that multiple times. I might seriously do that. Nice. <laughs> I really might do that. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this because, like, I've been looking forward to this since, like, Shocktober, because you guys are all like, Shocktober, and that's awesome. Like, I had a great time with it. Right. But I'm yeah. just like, wait till Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to rule this podcast. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Not really, but I'm, I'm excited for it, because the, awesome. the way that you guys feel about Halloween is how I feel about Christmas. So That's great. That's yes. awesome. It's Jesus. odd given your religious views. Right, right. Yeah. Jesus was cool. I mean, he, he was, you know, yeah, I don't, cool guy. I don't have anything against Jesus. Right. Well, and it, and it's you know it's just the holiday of it. It's the it's really a celebration of all of it. We got a uh, uh, a nativity set for our, as a wedding present, hmm. and Amanda was like, "Do we want to put this up?" And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah." I mean, we're yeah. still doing the holiday and. It's it's the same as doing Santa Claus. So if we're going to do Santa Claus, we might as well do the whole bit. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's 
and it, it would be not to go off on a tangent, but I mean to kind of dispel some some pre like some misconceptions about like we all identify ourselves as atheists and stuff, but I mean that doesn't mean we can't appreciate the the, the holiday spirit and mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. the the doing good goodwill towards a man, man. It's always it's a nice it's a nice sentiment and it is. It's uh it's an, it's an, it's a nice time of year. Mm-hmm. And presents. What and up? Presents. Yes, I'm rocking some new headphones that Tiny got me for Christmas. Thank Real you, quick, Tiny. best present you guys ever got for Christmas. Oh, oh you guys geez. Know off the top of your head. Uh, one year I got a bike, and one year I got a Sega Genesis. That's probably a oh, tie. Nice. nice. Yeah. Headphones. <laughs> I'm on the spot because Tiny just gave me some headphones. <laughs> um, no, one year when I lived in Florida for, uh, um, I was like 90, 92, 93, around the time Hurricane Andrew happened, um, <laughs> we're okay. But um, <laughs> I, like, my mom, like, this was right when I was really getting into Power Rangers. So, I, like, when, when I, Christmas morning, we had just like a big, big tree. Um, and then just, just presents all over the place. I just had like I, a, a ton of different Power Ranger toys. Like I had like the, the Zord Megazord. thing, Megazord thing. And yeah. it was awesome. I had like the whole play set of, of the, um, I can't even remember the, the lair or whatever, the Zordon's center or whatever. Nice. Um, the command center. Command center. Yeah. <laughs> command center. <laughs> yeah. Which by the way, if you want to see my, if you want to read my thoughts on how they could reboot, um, Power Rangers on the, um. Uh, in a Christopher Nolan fashion, check it out. I'll put the link in the show notes on houseofgeekery.com. <laughs> it's an awesome article. My favorite yeah. present, it's a tie like Mike's. Nice. A couple of years ago, my mom got me a framed uh, autographed program for uh, that was signed by Dario Franchitti. Oh, that's awesome. Um, living in Indianapolis, he's pretty well known. He's won the Indy 500 three times, I think, two or three. Ah. He just retired. See, I was kind of keeping my mouth shut. I was like, I hope that's not somebody that i should have obsessively viewed <laughs> no not at all so yeah he's uh he's he's up in the high annals of uh you know indy 500 lore because he's won it i think he's won it at least twice if not three times uh he just hmm. retired so it's like a valuable autograph and i like him he's scottish has an awesome accent so that was awesome and then when i was a kid uh one time one christmas my brother and i woke up at, you know like five in the morning and we went to the tree, and there was this ribbon that had been tied around the base of it, and it went off into the oh. kitchen. We were like, what? <laughs> and so we followed the ribbon and went all the way into the kitchen, and it went to the downstairs doorway, went all the way downstairs. And in the basement, uh, Santa Claus had set up a Fisher-Price pool table. Uh, and it was like – it was actually, it's like a sports oh. table because it, it, you could like turn it into like a – tabletop tennis and like, like yeah. air hockey and pool it had all these different sports and we lost our minds like we didn't leave the basement for like an hour even though we had all these other presents upstairs that's awesome <laughs> yeah that's that was my cool. dad's idea he's nice. he's really creative with christmas like that so that's awesome i remember my mom used to take take uh take snow and make snow tracks or it, it was a baking baking uh baking powder nice or baking soda or baking whatever soda. and just just making like like boot prints through the house and it was awesome uh, that's awesome and then uh and then i feel i feel weird because I, I went for the for the um in terms of best christmas present i went for the kind of like the superficial kind of like oh power ranger toys and i completely forgot that a couple of years ago my mom my mom and my, my mom got us like these like the shadow box it's like uh it's like a framed thing that's it's hard to explain but it's a shadow box that basically had like Pretty much like the only pictures of my grandfather oh, on wow. her side, yeah, in it, and then like it had like his name and it was all done up and it was pretty cool. Uh, but it was just it was just neat because like I mean I like my my grandfather on her side died like when she was a kid, so I mean like she didn't really know him that well. And obviously, we, there's no chance of any of us could have known him, but it was just weird because like I saw I was like oh wow my. His, his name was George. I mean, that's like that's how far removed I was from it. It was just a nice <laughs> sentiment and all that, and a nice present. That's cool. Yeah, cool. It's a good one. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. My uh, my parents were not creative at all. 
<laughs> really? The, yeah. I mean, you know, I might have mentioned before Christmas. Christmas was a big deal, but it was mm-hmm. not as big as Thanksgiving in my house or even Halloween. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they, I don't, I don't know. I guess they just weren't very creative. That's not to say my parents didn't do an awesome job of, right. cool. of Christmas stuff. And I always got cool stuff. Uh, you know, I, I had a Power Rangers year as well. And I had a, um, Ninja Turtles year. That was a big deal. But nothing like super spectacular, like a ribbon leading to the basement with a f- pool table. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Be jealous. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. But for me, Christmas was always in the things I would watch on TV. Mm-hmm. Yes. Nice segue. Nice you segue. like that? I love it. <laughs> um, I like it. Yeah, and, and like, but it really was. Yeah. I, you know, I, I kind of set that up as a segue, but truly it was. I, I always got into Christmas when the holiday specials would start. Nice. Yeah, me too. It's it's a it's a uh, a big part of the holiday season for me, honestly. And I don't know how that sounds, but I mean, it's just it's just what it is. As an as an obsessive viewer, I mean, you connect to certain things on on TV and in movies, and like I connect a lot of TV show episodes to christmas because they release christmas episodes Mm -hmm. um yeah so why don't we what like for this episode we're going to go through and just talk about uh tv uh christmas on tv pretty much so why don't we just why don't we just go around go around the table a few times and uh bring up something and and discuss it pretty much sounds good cool Cool. uh mike do you want to get us kicked off yeah i can i can start uh, I'll probably start with an obvious one. Uh, I'm going to talk about the first episode of The Simpsons ever. Oh, nice. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Uh, of course, it's not really any spectacular bit of trivia to know that it aired in uh, 1989, December 17th specifically. And uh, <clears throat> before then, The Simpsons was only were, were only shorts from the Tracy Ullman show. Uh, and so they decided to air a Christmas special of it and of course it kind of also served as a pilot and was picked up uh, as a series it's called um, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire and hmm. you know everybody knows the episode it was um, Homer goes and he, and he um, loses all the Christmas money so they go to the dog track and, and Bart gets a dog for Christmas and they name him Santa's Little Helper mm-hmm. or the, the dog track names him Santa's Little Helper mm-hmm. and uh, and he and he comes home and lives with the family. I don't think I saw it when it aired. Uh, I was you were <laughs> three, years old. probably a little too young to watch <laughs> The Simpsons. But it was certainly one that became a, an annual favorite. Um, after, you know, after I fell in love with The Simpsons, mm-hmm. th- their Christmas special was absolutely a favorite of mine. And that episode is one of my favorite episodes. Nice. Mine too. Um and it's it, the early seasons of of the Simpsons are kind of I mean they're kind of not hard to watch but they're they're just such stark differences there are such stark differences in the animation and the voiceover and the, and the yeah. voice acting and all that but I mean they're still classics and that uh, really really uh, is a really good well put together episode. Mm-hmm. Um, the first season in particular is kind of tough to watch. Yeah. Um, I would say except that episode, mm-hmm. and it kind of it. It kind of set the table for um, seasons to come. How The Simpsons was really uh, kind of a heartfelt family show, yeah. And yeah. it always kind of got a bad rap. I I know many friends whose parents would not let them watch The Simpsons. I was not one of those uh, kids. Thankfully, me neither. I yeah. kind of was for a long time, actually. Oh, wow. you were really? Yeah, for a long time, my parents wouldn't really they. They didn't necessarily say you can't watch it, but when they'd see me watch it, they'd be like, "Why are you watching this?" <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, wow. there's a lot of those. I, mm-hmm. It was it was kind of that show mm-hmm. for the early '90s. Yeah, uh, wow. it, like a pre South Park kind of deal. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but but this the episode Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire is an example of why I hate that label for the Simpsons because it's really cute. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and precious in a way, and and it's it's really good. Uh, it's funny. It's good for the family, and uh, and it's heartfelt, and and it's it's always been one of my favorite Christmas episodes. I agree. Nice. Yeah, good choice. Um, yeah, thanks. How about the rest of the Simpsons? I mean, well, I mean, <laughs> that's that's kind of saying a lot, but name the all rest 25 of the Simpsons. Name all twenty five of them right now. 
<laughs> no, um, I don't think they've had one every single year. Oh, really? I don't know if they yeah. have either. But huh. I remember one in particular was uh, the one where Bart got caught shoplifting the the, uh, um, the, video, the video game. game. Yeah, mm. and yep. that 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 really got me more in the Christmas spirit than actually than Simpsons roasting on open fire. Actually, because mm-hmm. um, it just felt it. I don't know. It was like. The episode plays out where Bart steals a uh, <laughs> where Bart steals a video game and then gets caught by security of or the the loss prevention guy or whatever, um, and so he go then the family goes back to the store after he's been like banned or whatever uh-huh. um, to get a family picture and then it's just it's it's like you said Mike it kind of goes back to the kind of heartfelt kind of thing where I mean Marge's heart is broken when she finds out about it and right. Then, and it's it's there's a there's kind of a the way it's set up is that the episode Marge is saying like they need to get a good picture for the holiday for a good holiday picture because all the other pictures are awful because um, mm-hmm. either Bart's making a face or Homer's drunk or whatever. <laughs> so this this year they they go and then it's like almost perfect, but then the um, the security guy yanks Bart at the last second, so the picture is Bart doing that but anyway the thing that got me about the episode was kind of toward the end i think the statute of limitations is passed on spoilers on this by the way <laughs> yeah <laughs> 1995 right <laughs> yeah. but he bart come bart kind of goes back or, or he comes he comes in after kind of he's been ostracized from the family a little bit and he comes back and he's kind of secretive he's like mom i'm just gonna go in my room and then uh, Marge doesn't trust him anymore, and she's like, "What? What are you hiding? What do you got there? Are you are you stealing again? Whatever." And then he's like, "He doesn't want to show her what he's got." And it's kind of this like kind of this tug of war between the two, and then it's finally yeah. revealed that it's just it's it's a it's a picture of him like a perfect like holiday picture of him like all dressed up and stuff that she got that he got for her. It's just kind of a touching like moment in the Simpsons history hmm. um, with a receipt that says "paid in full." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always remember that. Yeah, and that just that always kind of that kind of warmed my yeah. warmed my soul. And then, do you remember what he gets for Christmas? <laughs> it's shaped like a it's shaped like a video game, right? It is a video game, and isn't it? It is a video game. Yeah. She says it's the video game that every boy wants. <laughs> it's the... and uh, it's Lee Carvalho's putting challenge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the end credits, Bart's playing the game. <laughs> That's uh, funny. Yeah. yeah. And, what, and Bone Storm was the Bone Storm. was the game he wanted. And Millhouse <laughs> Millhouse gets it and then like Bart sees him playing it or whatever and then it's like just explosions uh, like in his house and stuff and then he goes in and Millhouse is like I just uh, all I did was put in my name and it shows a screen and it says like Thrill House or I, I think it cuts off so it says like Thrill Ho or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Was the uh was the Mr. Plow episode a Christmas one or was that just in winter. No, no. It was just in an episode. Just a winter episode. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes those winter episodes can kind of resonate with the holiday show sure. too. Yeah. 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 Wasn't the premise for it that Homer needed like extra money or something? And he started the plowing business? Or did he buy uh, he bought he a He ridiculous... lost his job at the power plant. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Or did he and then didn't he buy like didn't he buy the truck just he, ridiculous or something? Yeah. He yeah. bought a plow. Right. Right. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Mr. Plow, that's my name. That name again is Mr. Plow. <laughs> also, a really good, um, I don't know, a really good t- nod to small business. Um, <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, um, yeah uh, any other Simpsons related stuff you guys want to talk about at Christmas? <sighs> Not that I can remember. <laughs> I mean, there were a couple, but I don't know that any of them were nearly as good as those two that you mentioned. I wish I mentioned that one because that, that one is fantastic. Mm. Probably the better episode. I just remember Simpsons roasting on an open fire a little oh, yeah. better. That's cool. So that's my contribution. Nice. Cool. Uh, Tiny, do you want to? Sure. Um, to you? I'm going to start out with um, some Disney stuff because um, it had a huge impact on my childhood around Christmas time. And these were uh, some short films released by Disney. Um, the most notable one is Mickey's Christmas Carol, which is obviously, uh, you know, what was his name? Charles Dickens. <laughs> Charles Dickens. <laughs> Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol, uh, as as depicted by Disney. Um, Mickey plays Bob Cratchit. Uh, Scrooge McDuck plays Ebenezer Scrooge. Um, I thought that I always thought I remember Donald Duck playing Scrooge, but hmm. Donald Duck plays his nephew. Oh, 
ah. makes the the nephew is the character in the the play and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, it's really really good. I think it's an it's a great depiction of the story because everybody knows that story. Right. It's classic literature. Um, but whenever whenever I see that like a version of a Christmas Carol. Um, it always seems so long to me. <laughs> I think it's because I'm so, I'm so used to this Disney one, which is 25 minutes. Wow. Which yeah. I'll admit is pretty fast to tell that story, but mm-hmm. um, it it just gets everything packed in there in, in 25 minutes, and it's so great. It's heartfelt. Um, everything that's outside, it's snowing, which I loved when I was a kid, because nice. even to this day, I love snow. Um, and uh Scrooge McDuck has an awesome like Scottish accent even though it takes place in like Victorian London. That's awesome. Um it's fantastic. It's just a really good really good depiction of the story. It's one of my favorite ones. Nice. And then um some of the other famous Disney ones were uh one one short film called The Small One which uh it's an interesting it's kind of a cute story. Um it's about this little boy who um, is really close with uh, the family donkey. I know it sounds really gay, but uh, <laughs> it's it's a really undersized small donkey. All the other donkeys are much uh, better than it's bigger and and better. But the boy is really close with it. But the family has to sell the donkey, so he goes into town and he goes to the local market to try to sell the donkey. And he's not having any luck because it's too small. And by the end of the day, he's completely dejected and crying. It's dark, and he's sitting there with his donkey crying. And this man walks up to him, and it turns out that they were in the town of Nazareth. And he sells the donkey to Joseph to give Mary a ride to Bethlehem. Huh. Uh, it's, it's a cute wow. story. Yeah, it's a nice little, nice. It's a nice little story. Um, and there's another classic one called uh, Pluto's Christmas Tree, um, which is just donkey. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> donkey. Uh, Mickey setting up the Christmas tree with Pluto. Um, it's a classic one. It's really nice. nice. So, uh, yeah, I used to, like I said, I I identified so much with uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol. Um, I watched it multiple times every every Christmas. So uh, I highly recommend it. It's even if you don't have kids, (laughs) it's a great, uh, great example of some Christmas stuff. Wow. I'm I huh. wow I never I missed the boat on all those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, my my da- my dad actually like recorded them huh. on uh, on VHS like old school style. Nice um, through the VCR through the Disney Channel, and uh, I would watch them on VHS just ad nauseum during uh during the holiday season. But uh, and now I have the DVD. <laughs> nice. So That's it's awesome. it's pretty great. I recommend it. Nice. For cool. our listeners, and Mike, who Skyped in, Tiny brought the DVD with him to the recording. So it's very dear to him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, he just carries it with him all Christmas long. That's oh, yeah. true. I do remember I do remember seeing that at work sometimes. In case any, <laughs> you know, in case he needs to say, here's, here's my favorite. Yes. Right, right. Or if I see a child crying somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not that's and not creepy at all. Grown man walking no. through a crying child. <laughs> then again, Here, watch Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> then, the, then again, the child might be crying because a stranger just handed him a DVD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Good. Nice, Maddie. You're up. Yes, I am. Um, let's see. I'm I'm gonna go with just off the top of my head, kind of kind of following along the Tiny's example a little bit. Um, everyone has to have seen this, but. A Charlie Brown Christmas. Classic. Right? Um, Mike, how about you? Have you seen it? Obviously. You know, I don't know if I've seen it uh, all the way through. Wow. Like in one sitting. Huh. Huh. I've seen part of it, and then I've seen other part of it. But no, that's not true. You know, I've seen it all the way through, but not uh, not in probably 20 years. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Just Were you just not a fan of it, or did you just No, I wasn't. I didn't like it. Oh wow! You know, okay. honestly, not to steal your thunder, but I wasn't really huge on it either as a kid. <sighs> yeah. By the time it's so old <laughs> that by the time it came out, like the the animation didn't interest me. Okay, I can understand that. And plus, like I was just watching a kid, and I was like, D- "Linus, the tree sucks." Okay, <laughs> right. it sucks. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with having an awesome tree. But it's about what the tree represents. <laughs> I get that, and it's and cool. it's about the commercialization of Christmas. And but how it's but not... when you're seven, you don't care. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I do agree. It's it is a really nice 
sentiment. It's a great cartoon. Yeah. It's it's fantastically done. Yeah. But when you're a kid, I just you know I'm just like presents. Nice. Okay. Well, I <laughs> I'm completely different. Um, I yeah, like. Tell it a lot us why you kid. like it. I liked it a lot as a kid because of because of the whole the the kind of sentimentality about it. It wasn't the same. It wasn't the usual kind of sentiment. It was more of this this idea that I I couldn't register in my brain when I first saw it. But the whole uh, commercialization of Christmas and all that kind of thing. It's not something that registered with me, but as I grew older, I kind of thought like, oh, well, okay, I can see where they're coming from now. Um, and it was, it was just, it was, I liked it a lot. Um, <laughs> I think, I, honestly, I kind of think that part of it was that I loved the idea of uh, Charlie Brown being put in charge of the uh, Christmas play or the pageant or, or whatever it was. Yeah. Cause like they, they all had these self assigned roles and that was like around the time where I was kind of starting to realize like, Oh, those pictures on the TV and in the movies are part of something bigger that people actually work for. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I kind of, it was, it was like my first introduction to like behind the scenes kind of movie and TV magic that kind of, um, you know, grew from there. Um, okay. so I think part of that might be that. And then the other part is just, Christmas and 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 just the I watched it at a, such a young age that it kind of forged this this association in my brain like I can't I can't like the music and everything from it um and the renditions of the music of of that they do in it um just resonate with me as Christmas music um mm-hmm. it's just that I have that connection in my brain um but I like it a lot it's yeah. a good choice definitely thank you yep is uh doesn't were you guys like big with did you really like read or watch uh, Peanuts and Charlie Brown and stuff? Was that like big with you guys when you were kids? Uh, uh, I read it, and not so much when I was a kid. But uh, one of my teachers in high school got the newspaper, and so mm. I read. I always read the strip, but I never watched the cartoon. Okay, uh, I'm the same way. Yeah, um, me either. <laughs> uh, I uh, I remember after Charles Schultz died, they they had classic Peanuts. <coughs> Sorry, I'm still a little sick, so I'm coughing. Mm-hmm. Um. But they had classic peanuts in the paper every every Friday or whatever, um, or every day maybe I don't know. But anyway, every Friday I would go to the social studies room, uh, Mr. Pelly, who just retired actually. He did, yes. Um, coach Pelly to Tiny. I had him. Yeah. I had him as coach one year, but uh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, but he had the he had the newspaper, so we would go there for like study hall or it was called prime time at Speedway, um, and I'd grab a paper and I I read classic peanuts, and I had it in my head that. <laughs> this is like teenage Matt's like like thought processes. If I read it enough, eventually I'll read the same one. <laughs> <laughs> Not realizing that it was in, in like it was in like it was it was in publication for a long, long time. Yeah, a little bit, very long. <laughs> yeah, and for the record, I never read the same one twice. Wow, I don't think good. I did at least. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the strip a lot. Oh yeah. yeah. Yep, it's good. Um, and I, I, I never really watched any of the other specials or anything like that, or the cartoon. <laughs> yeah, the Halloween one's famous. Yeah, the yeah, the, it's, the Great Pumpkin. The Great Charlie Pumpkin. Yeah. yeah. Which my off on a tangent, but my sister has two kids, and she's getting into this thing where um, every year they're every year the kids are going to get like like presents and candy and stuff or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's going to be like under the guise of like, oh, the Great Pumpkin delivered these and. It's like a new tradition and stuff. So it's, I meant to get her the, the DVD for uh, Halloween. What? Or, uh, for, on or, Halloween, they're going to get those? Yeah, or like the days leading up to Halloween, they're going to get like little goodie bags and be like, oh, the Great Pumpkin came or whatever. So yeah. more candy? Pretty much, yeah. They need more candy? <laughs> yeah, uh, they don't. <laughs> that is just but, yeah. adding to the to the stuff that parents have to do. It is. Do it they is. have an elf on the shelf? No, they don't actually. Really? Yeah. I'm flabbergasted. Me too, <laughs> honestly. Because if they're if she's gonna do the great pumpkin, leaving BS bags of candy, <laughs> you would think Elf on the Shelf would be like fishing for goldfish in the sink or whatever yeah. his parents do. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. I'll have to run that by her. Um, yeah. I'm I guess, sorry, I'm a little bitter about the Elf on the Shelf. No, it's no, just so fine. much work, and it's, <laughs> so it's just another thing that they add. An- another stupid. I don't know. I don't know why Christmas isn't enough. Yeah, it's like it's kind of the same token as like card companies and stuff, like inventing like sweetest day. Yeah, like, but isn't what the hell is that? Isn't the elf on the shelf supposed to represent like the elf is always watching you during the holiday season, so you need to be yeah. good? Oh, I get it. It's genius. So it it has a, it has a 
a good spirit behind it, you know, encouraging kids to be good. That's yeah. Nice. But you do have you do have I a feel point, like though. it's just so much more work for the parents. It's just like more stuff to do. Well, if sure. you just if you just take out the elf and set it on the mantelpiece, that's not a lot of work. Right. But if you're you're right, if but you, you got to move it every night. Uh, do you? That's the oh, thing. That's the I goal. Is that's that. the like every night it's got to move somewhere else so it looks real. Huh. So it's like doing stuff. And so parents, these crazy parents, <laughs> are like having the elf on the shelf do like cause mischief. Wow. I read this blog the other day of this lady who hates like mothers who overdo it. Mm-hmm. And she was talking about how uh, she showed this blog of, of like 101 things to do with your elf on the shelf, which <laughs> oh by gosh. the way, 101 things is ridiculous. Yeah. And one of them is, uh, the elf on the shelf baked cookies and left the mess for me to clean up in the morning, which uh. is so stupid. Cause you got to clean up the mess in yeah. the morning. <laughs> and that, that steps on the toes of Santa. Because Santa leaves cookies, cookie crumbs, at least in my house, yep. I was done. Totally. True. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely have a point. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't know. But I'm again, just, I love... I'm just bitter. Yeah. Right. My kids' Christmases Christmas. are going to suck, <laughs> <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> nice. Well, now that you crapped on my sister's uh, apparent yeah. skills. <laughs> uh, no, but <laughs> ah, I understand. I'm bug. <laughs> um... Uh, first of all, before we go on to Mike's next one, I just got to mention, Tiny, you've been like like de-layering this entire time. Are you warm or something? I am. I'm, like <laughs> I said, I'm excited. I have nice. the, the spirit of Christmas cheer is making me warm. Wow. That's awesome because you came in wearing like a, a shirt, a sweater, and a jacket or something. A coat, yeah. It's a in coat. There. Yeah, and like you've just slowly been de- – and like for our listeners and for Mike who's not here, he's via Skype. Uh, we're in like a sunroom in my in my brother's house and like it's – like all glass separating us from the the dangers of outside weather, so it's kind of like I'm still here in my hoodie. But give it twenty minutes, I'll be naked. Oh yes, yes. Mm. Um, <laughs> oh jeez. <So, laughs> mm-hmm. All right, so Mike, how about your next one? We got a little detract detra- derailed there. Well, I was gonna talk about one thing, but I guess I'll save it because we're talking about uh, the shorts, and I figured that I would share my favorite short. Uh, Frosty the Snowman from 1969. Nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, when I was younger, and it was really only for a couple years until I realized I didn't actually like them, the, <laughs> the Christmas shorts were like an event. I remember being out at grocery stores, and my mom would be like, well, Rudolph starts at 7 o'clock. We better get home, <laughs> and being super excited about it. And then after you know two or three, maybe four years of watching that, I was like, Rudolph kind of sucks. <laughs> and uh but the one I I did always like was Frosty the Snowman and I guess I I guess I like the so- the song or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh or I thought it was funny that he said happy birthday, but everybody knows the story. Uh they they build Frosty and there's the magic hat that brings him to life and the magician is trying to get him and then uh of course, he doesn't. Frosty's happy, and they sing the song "Frosty the Snowman." Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's quick, simple. It is it's fun, is. and uh, it is widely lauded by uh, religious folk. Um, I don't want to go off on. A, oh, I do kind of want to go off on a tangent here. <laughs> do it, uh, but you know they don't like it because the song and the short any any iteration of the story involves a magic hat as oh. opposed to you know god oh. wow. so it puts it puts a uh pagan or secular spin on christmas because it involves magic and not like the spirit of god or jesus or whatever because god and jesus aren't magic at all <clears throat> yeah nope, not at all Wow, that's I didn't know that. Yeah, I've 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 read articles. I've seen the crazies on Fox News talk about it. <laughs> but isn't that I mean, how is it any more magical than Santa? Are these the right. same people who hate Santa Claus? Uh yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. In well, short, that yeah. Sense. <laughs> that just that just reminds me of the line from uh, How I Met Your Mother, where uh, where Ted's like, uh, our su- "I'm gonna spend Christmas with my super religious cousin," and then they're like, "Well, what about Santa or something like that?" And then he's like, "Oh, they don't they don't believe in presents or Santa because they think that Santa is uh, Satan just disguising his name or something like that." <laughs> uh, yeah. So true. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, sorry to put a, a somber mood on that, but. That's you know. okay. I still liked it as a kid. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, I'm I still not... loved the magic. I'm yeah. saying they're crazy. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They <laughs> but are. how did the Fox News people, how did they connect uh, Frosty the Snowman with uh, um, 
uh, Obama's Kenyan origins, though. I don't know, they but what they way. said, um, <laughs> you know, a couple people were talking about how Frosty can also be brown snow. But then the Fox News says everybody knows Frosty is just white. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Uh, uh, good times. Geez. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, so Frosty the Snowman. It's, it's probably like the only one of those shorts that I actually cared about. Uh, and that includes the Charlie Brown and especially Rudolph. Mm-hmm. Rudolph kind of scared me, actually. Really? How so it was very was weird. It? The animation was very shaky. Uh, like, you never know what Rudolph is going to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's the collect the claymation one, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was just going to bring that up. Did you guys watch it? And not to bring it up as a topic, but just as a small little aside. Um, did you guys watch any of the claymation specials? I never really got into them that yeah, much. Me neither. Yeah. I mean, I used to watch Rudolph. But right. Huh. Yeah. I watched Only them. three or four times. Hmm. <laughs> I watched them, but I never really. I was never super excited about them. Yeah. So one year, I got really excited about just Christmas in the Christmas spirit of of movies and TV. Um, so I watched uh, or, or I bought like a big like kind of bundle of like all the claymation specials from mm. like from like all the classics. Um, and then I don't think I ever watched. It. I think I gave it to my sister as like a, a <laughs> Christmas present or something. Solid purchase. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, the amount of money that I've wasted on movies and TV, like on on DVDs, is just astonishing. I'm sure I would yeah, never want to. That's a whole other that. podcast. It really is. <laughs> um, so let's see. That was that was Mike's turn. So Tiny, how about you? Yes, uh, I'm going to bring up a a show nice. now because uh, it's only had four seasons. Uh, Community. The show oh, is yes. Community. Uh, and, uh, Three point like seven five. There we you don't go. really count the fourth whole <laughs> season. Yeah, <clears throat> but uh, it has had some great. First of all, just great holiday episodes in general. Yeah, uh, we talked about the Halloween ones in our uh, Shocktober episodes, um, which are fantastic. Some of the best, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, but I think even their Christmas ones are just fantastic. The uh, the first season one wasn't necessarily. It was interesting because you know that like religion was brought up, mm-hmm. and a lot of people in the group are different of different religions. Troy's yeah. a Jehovah's Witness, right. Annie's Jewish, uh, Britta's atheist. Word up, and uh, <laughs> and so they all they all there's friction between the members of the group, and uh, it you know of course in the end they all come together and they fight people. Yeah, <laughs> which is what Christmas is all about. It is. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Um, that was, and that was just a fun episode. Matt really likes it. Yeah, um, I like it a lot. The, yeah. It has one of my favorite lines of the entire series. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's where uh, um, what, is it Anthony Michael Hall? Yeah, where he's he's got his goons and they're outside waiting for waiting for Jeff. And then he's like, it's just like a blink and you'll miss it line. But he's like, I'm telling you, man, if if the, if this guy doesn't show up, I'm gonna go to oh wait. Applebee's. I'm gonna go to Applebee's because I'm gonna fight no matter what today. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such a great line. And it's it's one of their best lines. Yeah, it kills me every time. So funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's a, that's a good one. And then actually, my favorite one is uh, the title of the episode is Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas. Yes. Um, it is a it is like a, one of the claymation ones. Yeah, it's like um, a stop motion or stop motion. There you go. Yeah. Um, one and the same. I don't know. And it's it's kind of a classic. Uh, a classic scenario, classic formula for a holiday episode, trying to find the spirit of Christmas. Uh, but it's, it's through the, through the channel of Abed having some separation issue, issues with his family. And mm-hmm. um, so it has a somber side to it, but in the end, you know, obviously it, it ends very, very uh, admirably. It ends very, very warmly. Um, and it's just hilarious too. Um, yeah. Making all the characters into little silicone claymation characters right. uh, was so funny. For me, that episode became like an instant classic of, of just TV, uh, Christmas TV episodes. Um, me too. It's just like it's like required viewing for me every year. I'm, I'm actually, I actually need to watch it again this year. <laughs> but um, even even with its dig at Lost at the end, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, which I remember Damon Lindelof like tweeted after it aired, like, "Oh, like, you got me" or whatever. But because mm-hmm. there's like uh, Abed finds the DVD and he's like, "It's it's the first season of Lost." It's uh, it signifies wasted potential or something like that. Something or, along those lines. Like um, a payoff. Like a payoff, yeah. 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 Which the series finale was good. Anyway, yeah, it's a great <laughs> episode. I love it. I love just as a concept. It's classic community. Yeah. Um, and yeah. don't forget, it has some great songs in it. It does. Which it a does. lot of a lot of Christmas episodes and movies have great music in them. Mm-hmm. Um, 
sad quick Christmas song. <laughs> right. Sad quick. Uh, yeah, it's fun. It's just a, <laughs> it's a, it, the the music is nice and short and it's simple, but that's that's how it should be. Christmas <laughs> is simple, so yeah. mm-hmm. um, that's my favorite I, uh, one. I think its greatest success is the uh, the characterization of Abed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's really um, it's what in the second season I think so yeah and we know a lot about Abed but it's really kind of the first time we see oh no I guess not I guess he made that video of yeah, his dad in the, the first season right um, but you, there you don't get a whole lot of character episodes um, you know because they usually stick to the funny right for the most part mm-hmm. on that show that's not to say they don't they don't uh, emphasize character every now and then but. Uh, it, for for a Christmas episode, it was really good. Uh, just another episode about the group coming together, and we learn a little bit more about Abed, and mm-hmm. that was awesome. Absolutely, well said. Um, Thanks. Yep. And uh, season three, also, I'm spacing on that one oh. for the moment. I forget. <laughs> the, uh, that one's awesome. Yeah, the the it's the um, Glee episode. The Glee episode. Oh yeah. Which hey, let's tread lightly because we don't want to get any more hate mail. Um, <laughs> Does this have anything to do with regionals? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but uh, that's such a great episode. It is funny, I, and again, the songs are yeah. just great. I can't remember; it's been so long since I wa- um, watched it. But the songs, uh, uh, the rap, the Abed and Troy rap, yeah, is just legendary. Um, is it Baby Boomer Santa? No, no, no. no. Uh, that was a uh, well, that was that was um, 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 Pierce's song. Oh, I know the rap. Yeah. I don't remember yeah. talking about now. Yeah. yeah. Where he's trying to convince him to celebrate Christmas because he's a Je- Jehovah's Witness. And they're yes, not that's celebrate. right. <laughs> I I love it so much. Like I can't when that episode aired. I can't tell you how many times I viewed that YouTube video. Um, I will be Jehovah's most secret witness. I might just might have to dedicate my life to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it so it's much. So funny. Uh, it is actually like it's a really creative song. It is. Oh uh, yeah. It's a little bit meta, but if you're a fan of the show, it's fantastic. Ah right. uh, yeah. yeah. I like. Uh, I like Annie's song. Uh-huh. Boop, boop, be doop, Who sex. doesn't? <laughs> was she saying things in that in that song? Yeah. <laughs> were there words? I, there were words. <laughs> What's uh, it? You guys. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, guys. I, and I, I love that. I, I mean, I say, like, oh, yeah, she's really hot, and was there words and everything. But it's actually a really good send-up of kind of the sexual thing of, of Christmas music. Like, uh, um, um, like Santa wow. Baby. Yeah, 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 which is yeah. kind of creepy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it's a cool like kind of kind of mocking of that, and, uh, mm-hmm. and it's very fun to watch. Uh, I, <laughs> I can't tell you after that episode aired how many times I watched that YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> Me uh, too. Yes, with a my favorite door. thing is, <laughs> and I just remembered this uh, was there's a. When they're watching the Inspector Space Time Holiday Special, <laughs> they're actually making fun of the Star Wars Holiday Special. Are they? Are they? Yeah, with they the band are. that is playing on the on the hologram. That's a that's a direct reference to the the Star Wars Holiday Special. That's oh. awesome. Yeah. I didn't even make that connection because anytime I see Inspector Space Time, I think Doctor Who. Yeah. Um, right. Wow, that's true. Wow. Yep. Check it out. That's It'll awesome. make you laugh harder. Nice. nice. Cool. You own By the, the way, special, we're going to leave the, the Star Wars special. holiday special out of this conversation. <laughs> Should we, though? Because you own it, right? I do own it, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I've never seen it. Yeah, me neither. Oh, that's awful. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. That's great. Um, so uh, I think, Matt, you're up. Yeah, it is my turn. Um, let's see. I'm just kind of free balling in here. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and bring up... I, Mike, I don't know how much of this show you've watched, but the... Um, it's a very sunny Christmas. Is that what it's called? Oh yeah, yeah. it's always sunny. Yeah, in Philadelphia. I've seen it. Yeah, love the episode. It's funny. Love it. Um, if only for Charlie Day freaking out about no, no, no. I, I love the episode. It's it's great. <laughs> it's uh, it was released separately, and I own the DVD separately. Um, that it's it's uh it's basically their their um, it's their Christmas episode. But there's a scene where they're kind of going down memory lane, and Mac. <laughs> His watching old videos of his of his Christmas, and it becomes very clear, very throughout throughout the throughout the episode or throughout the clip, that um, <laughs> that his parents were breaking into people's houses and stealing presents. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, 
<laughs> and it was worse than that though they were breaking into people's houses and having christmas yes like they were having yeah. christmas morning around the tree yes <laughs> yeah right and poor Mac is just under the impression that that's just how Christmas is. Christmas is in Philly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. And then, uh, I, I just, I love it. And, um, <laughs> and also the, when, when he, when he unwraps the presents and he does the like karate chopping and oh, stuff, it's so great. It's so funny. It's, it's like the funniest thing ever because that's like, that's, that's very, very true to that character. And it's such a nice, it's like, it's so true to the character, and it's such a like a small little thing that you wouldn't think much of, but knowing the character, it's like it just it amplifies it to the point of being just absolutely hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love it. And that, that's such a great holiday special because then then Charlie finds out that his mother. <laughs> that's my favorite part. <laughs> yes, that she was, uh, for lack of a better word, whoring herself out for Christmas <laughs> presents. Um, uh, and and it's and when seeing him freak out at the mall Santa and like dropping the f bomb is just hilarious. Yes. It's absolutely hysterical. Oh, uh, it's it's um, epic, really. Yeah, yeah. I, I I love it. I absolutely love it. It's a great Christmas special, and also another thing that kind of became required viewing for me every year. Nice. Yep. Good Very choice. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mike, you want to go? Yeah, I can go. Um. I want to talk about one of my favorite shows of all times, Friends. Oh, yes. And uh, not that it had like annual event Christmas episodes, I don't think. Uh, But the one in particular that I think a lot of people remember is probably from one of, if not the best season of Friends, and that's season five with uh, the one with the holiday armadillo. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Classic. Yeah, it is classic. Years ago, there were these people called the Maccabees. The Maccabees! (laughs) (laughs) And so uh, Ross has his son Ben for Christmas, of course, and he brings Ben over to Monica's. And and Ben is sad because he wants to do Christmas, but of course Ross wants to teach him about Hanukkah uh, because he and Monica are Jewish, of course. And so he, (laughs) he feels bad and decides that he's going to do Santa, but uh, all they have left is an armadillo costume. (laughs) (laughs) And so he has to be the, uh, holiday armadillo. It's one of the episodes that was on the best of friends DVDs. Am I, am I wrong about that? That sounds right. I think so. Yeah. And, 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 and very much deservedly. So, and that's one of my favorite episodes of, of the series as a whole. Yeah, um, I'm trying to think of the other Christmas episodes. I'm off my game. I need to rewatch Friends. It's been it's been a few years. Is yeah. need the right word? Uh, need is the right word. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I honestly, uh, as a little aside, I think I'm going to rewatch Friends after How I Met Your Mother ends because my brain works weird. Yeah, we know. Uh-huh. There's a couple. <laughs> There's uh, uh, oh. the one with the girl from Poughkeepsie. The one with the inappropriate sister. The one with the routine. Yeah, that's more of a New Year's. That is. Uh, that's the one I was going to bring up. But yeah. the one with Christmas in Tulsa. That's actually a great one. It is. Oh yeah, that's a great. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that's is that a clip show? Christmas in Tulsa is yeah. Yeah, but it's a good but, clip show. It is, but the frame story is really good. Yeah, that's that's one thing that Friends did very well was they did clip shows almost every season, but uh-huh. they had really good frame stories. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the Holiday Armadillo was season seven actually. Oh, it was. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. What the hell, Mike? Um, I know, right? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm mistaken. I apologize. Right. Ah, it's all right. But yeah. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was looking. It's the fifth Christmas episode, seventh season. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Gotcha. I will stand by that the fifth season is one of the best seasons. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, five, six, and seven is like the prime of yep. uh, Friends. Yep. So, uh, Holiday Armadillo. December 14th, 2000, it aired. Nice. Cool. Yeah, that's it's such a great episode. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, the the best is uh, is Chandler's reaction to seeing the holiday armadillo. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It was. Uh, oh, how did how did he do it? Was that when he came up sh- showing up as a? Uh, he Santa? was Santa. He was Santa. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he came in as Santa. <laughs> yeah. He's like, nice to see you too, weird turtle man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then Joey shows up as Superman. <laughs> yeah. He's, what does he say? Uh, it looks like the Easter Bunny's funeral. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Phoebe with the classic line, I understand why um, – oh, what was what was the line? Superman and Santa are Superman here. Superman and Santa here. But why is – and then what did uh, – what did what did she say? Why is? Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it was it was good. Yeah. Um, it's with the Ninja Turtle, maybe. I don't know. Something like that. But, yeah. But yeah, that was a great episode. Good. Good. Classic call. episode. Oh yeah. Nice. Uh, Tiny, how about you? You want to go next? Uh, yeah, I was going to bring up uh, another comedy, another half hour comedy nice. called uh, The Office. Nice. Which I hope we're all familiar with. I know Mike wasn't. Mike isn't. Mike wasn't. Yeah. yeah. Which, I by the way, just it. as another aside, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, if we ever want to do a sitcoms three episode, uh, part three, mm. I would like. I kind of want to be like Mike. You should watch The Office, <laughs> and then we can do it. Like, you know, if nope. you have time. Oh, <laughs> wow! Poo pooed it right away. Merry Christmas, Matt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nope. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. But, I'll uh, tell you what else. Uh, Amanda and I tried to watch Parks and Rec, and that's not going to happen. Oh, uh, really? Well, I can understand that on your part, because you're not a Aziz Ansari fan or an Aubrey Plaza fan. Yeah. Um, nope. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, proceed. Yeah. Yes, The Office. Um, they had several uh, Christmas episodes. Yeah. I think they did one every year, actually. Yeah. Maybe every year, except the, for the first season. Except for the first season, yeah. which is only six episodes. Right. Uh, but th- my favorite one is, I, th- I think my favorite one is the second season. Uh, it's called A Benny Hanna Christmas. It's actually season three, sorry. <sighs> I know. Is it, is second it season Christmas seven? <laughs> <laughs> it is the second Christmas episode. It is, go. it is. Anyways, uh, A Benny Hanna Christmas, um, which is a weird title, right. but uh, it. It's really funny. It involves Michael breaking up with Jan, who uh, was the like the CEO of the company, and uh, he was dating her, and she kind of dumped him because it was a it was a inappropriate relationship, and he was like all broken up about it. But it was the day of their Christmas party. Yes, it was. A, it was. A, sorry, I know I'm being a, a control freak, but it was actually he he broke up with. Uh, um, um, Oh, it was the other his wife person. in real life. Um, yeah, I can't remember her name. The the real estate agent, but anyway, yeah, Carol. Uh, Carol, yeah, yeah. Because he because he sent them he sent on a Christmas card where he photoshopped himself onto her and her kids' ski trip. That's like, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I screwed it up. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But and then they go to Benihana because it's kind of a uh, isn't that like like uh, Ed Helms uh, Andy's um, his like his like choice for. Uh, like this is what you need to what you need to like. Kind he's of trying place. to make him feel better and yeah. stuff, and he's yeah. like, "So let's let's just go out. To, you know, we'll have a guys a guys lunch out, <laughs> right. and they go to Benihana, <laughs> yeah. and it just gets hilarious because they end up like picking up these two wa- <clears throat> excuse me these two waitresses to try to make him feel better. <laughs> these two like <clears throat> identical twin waitresses. They weren't identical. They weren't twins, identical twins. But That's right. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that makes it me was, sound racist. It really does. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there, there were these two Asian. Ladies, but that's what they were. Poking. Oh that's no! What, that's what <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, but the point of the episode was that he couldn't tell them apart, and I thought that they were identical twins because right. I hadn't seen it in a few years. Yeah, um, so they were poking fun at the right, whole, you know, the, right. the the racist saying that all Asian people look alike. <laughs> yeah, that uh, I just pointed out really quick. Yep, um, we're white. Yeah, um, so sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so at one point, he, in order to tell them apart, uh, in order to remember which one he was supposed to be hitting on, he put a uh, he took a marker and put a mark on her arm so he could remember which one she is. <laughs> That's one of my favorite parts of the episode. <laughs> it's so funny, uh, and it's 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 just there's so much other great stuff in the episode. Um, it's really really funny. So, yeah, I can't remember really many of the other, uh, the office episodes, um, Christmas episodes. I'm I know there were some good now. ones. There were some very good ones. Um, Yankee, Yankee swap. Yankee swap. That was the first one. It was, was um, it the first one? Yeah. Uh, uh, when he buys, they do, they do secret Santa and this, that was like, that was like the best season two is the best season of the oh, office. Oh yeah. I agree. By far. Um, because they had the whole, the tension of, 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 um, Jim and Pam, and that was before they. That was when they. That was when they were at their height because it was season two. Jim was in love with Pam. Pam had no idea she was engaged. So he got her a teapot with a bunch of trinkets and like inside jokes and stuff. A really and personal gift. A very personal gift. And then he also slipped a card in there telling him telling her how he felt. Um, but then Michael gets it in gets it in his head. He he buys Ryan because he has like this man crush on Ryan. Um, a, a video iPod. Even though there's a twenty dollar limit, so he institutes 
like a, a Yankee swap kind of where you just you just switch switch presents around. So everyone wants the the iPod. So <laughs> Pam tries to get the iPod, and then the the teapot goes goes all around, and then the whole episode is Jim trying to get the teapot back and all that. It's it's really. It's it's a really good episode. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a classic Michael episode it is. because he buys the iPod, but then gets really mad when <laughs> yeah. everybody else is like you. Like like I think the the gift he ends up getting is from, uh, from Phyllis, yeah. and it was like a oven mitt that she knitted herself. <laughs> yeah. And he's like he's like really I got an iPod. <laughs> I got Ryan an iPod. You got me a oven mitt. Yes, I love the way that he the way <laughs> the way he delivers the line where he has the talking head where he's like um. Sorry, um, where he's like, uh, uh, he's like, so Christmas is all about telling people how how you feel about them in terms of money, <laughs> and uh, I bought I bought Ryan an iPod, and Phyllis Phyllis decided to tell me that she she cares about me a homemade oven mitts worth. <laughs> <laughs> And what's so great about it is that that's a, that's a very touching gift because she made it herself. For it him. is. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that's a really great episode. Yeah, well. it's it's really awesome. And then they had like Moroccan Christmas, which was okay. Mm-hmm. And then they had uh, they had that one. I think was that that was Benihana Christmas, the the B side of Benihana Christmas or whatever. The B story of it was the the office party. Where, yeah, uh, the two planning party yeah. planning committees. Yeah. yeah. That was good. And uh, also, back to Benny Hanna Christmas real quick, because I know Mike is probably getting tired of us talking about a show he hasn't watched. <laughs> um, but the Benny Hanna Christmas Maybe one, I should watch this show. You should. Yeah. Yes. No, I'm kidding. Aww. Aww. Um, Sad. But the <laughs> part of the – one of my favorite scenes from Benny Hanna Christmas is when they're at Benny Hanna and um, – um, 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 Jim is pranking Dwight because Dwight is seated like down the down the table, and so the waitress is talking to the guys, and then Dwight can't hear, her. so he's like, so Jim's like, Jim like talks to, like tells Dwight like, uh, Dwight's like, what's what's she saying, and then Dwight's like, oh, he's trying, she's trying to figure out how to how to gut a Christmas goose or something like how that. you how you prepare a Christmas goose, yeah, and then Dwight's like, oh, here, and like gets her attention, <laughs> and he like. <laughs> He says like very loudly and while pantomiming it, he's like, he's like, you have to, you have to, you have to get the knife right in the jugular, and you got, you're gonna be prepared. You're gonna need a bucket because there's gonna be a good amount of blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, it's such a great. It's really funny. Yeah, that's one of the best parts of the episode. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah, The Office had some really good episodes, and if you haven't watched The Office, I think you really should. Just general listeners here. And um, it's a great. Now screw that. Oh okay. <laughs> um, it. Yeah. Um, is it my turn now? Uh, yes, it is. Holy I crap. think it is. You might have to wrap it up. Yeah, maybe. Well, we're it's at the like last one. 50, we're at about an hour. Yeah, we're that's, about an that's hour. Three for but, each of us, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. um Ooh, well, a lot of pressure. It is, it is a lot of pressure. I'm trying to think of trying to think of one. I had one in my head, but I can't think. Well, of would one. we be remiss if we didn't mention mention Doctor Who? We Doctor would be, Who? but eh, we yeah. would, but I'm not a fan. Yeah, Mike doesn't watch it. Plus, the Christmas episodes aren't really that Christmas related, except for maybe the Christmas Invasion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's more of a backdrop than than a thing. Well, it's and true. the Christmas Carol episode, but it's it's like a staple of the series. They do a Christmas special every year. It is, and I think is this Saturday the Christmas special? Uh, I think it might be. Yeah. Well, That's... let's save let's save Star Wars holiday special and Doctor Who Christmas for next Christmas. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll when say you, that. So, listeners, come, come back one yes. year from tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Because, you know, they, it adds a day every year, right, unless right. it's a leap year. I don't know. Yeah. Come back next year. <laughs> yeah. And then that's when we'll have our big uh, Star Wars holiday special and um, Doctor Who Christmas special episode where Mike is a Whovian. There you go. Yeah. Yep. So you have and I've seen year. every episode of The Office. Yes. <laughs> In that beautiful, beautiful moment of that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um <laughs> Uh well, well, I already talked about wings in a previous episode because they had a really good Christmas episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I might be out. Um, oh, well, why, why don't we talk about um, how I met your mother? Nice. I was gonna say I yeah. didn't want to. I wanted to let you say it, but uh, <laughs> how Lily wow. stole Christmas. Yeah, I I, I yeah. referenced it earlier with the Santa thing, but that's a really good Christmas episode. Absolutely. And, all right, where do you guys land on what he said on the answering machine? Because they because it's network TV, they change it to Grinch. And Grinch is very close to to bitch, but it kind of seems like he comes with the severity of the c word. 
I don't think so. No, it's, think the, so? it's the B word. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Huh. All right. I, and I wouldn't say, I wouldn't peg Ted as someone who would use the C word. That's a good point. <laughs> I think in the commentary they might talk about like what it might mean, what it might be, or something like that. But I, I, you're right. It it is probably the B word. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah. Um. And it's a good episode. I love. I love the idea of it. Kind of. <laughs> Like at some point in the future, when I am retired, a retired podcast entrepreneur <laughs> and blogger, um, I want to take clips from How I Met Your Mother and compile them to a video that shows how it was really all about them struggling with their alcoholism. <laughs> um, and how Lily Stole Christmas is a prime example of that because it introduces the idea that whenever Lily and Ted are mad at each other, they they bridge they they their their olive branch is this mug of beer that they bring to each other mm-hmm. and it's kind of this uh and then there's a scene where after after ted's been t- <laughs> after ted's been uh having his little like christmas dinner from not really christmas dinner from hell but this nightmare Christmas dinner with this religious family. He goes and sees them at the door and then he's like, Oh, thank God. And he grabs the beer and he like starts drinking it and stuff. It's kind of <laughs> like, that's, that's, you know, if you see it in a different light, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah. it's, it's a nice, it's a touching thing. It know. is. It is. Yeah. If you're just a cynic like me who thinks he called, who thinks he called Lily the yeah. C word, then <laughs> <laughs> I put a damper on that Christmas episode. <laughs> um, I this think, is a strange Christmas episode. Yeah. <laughs> I think my favorite one is actually, I want to say it's the first season of How I Met Your huh. Mother where Marshall needs to study for a final and like they decorate the, they decorate the apartment and everything. But like as he's leaving, he has his eyes closed because he's like, yes. I don't want to see it. That's, right. yeah. That's how Lily stole Christmas. That's season That's two. Right. Is it? Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember. Okay. Shoot. I love that part because he's like, he has his eyes closed. And I, that's kind of how I feel like. Oh, yeah. It's always an event. It was always an event when we would put up all our decorations. We have, like, we just we just finished putting ours up this week. And, like, nice. we have, like, 15 of these huge Rubbermaid containers that we keep all of our all of our Christmas decorations in. And it's like. That's awesome. I mean, it, it's an event. It takes us all day to get him to get everything down and all set up, and just, I love it. It's fantastic, and so I kind of feel like Marshall does. I'm like, oh, it's the winter wonderland, and I love as he's leaving, he has his eyes closed, and he's like, I don't want to see you guys. And he, like he runs his head into some streamers or whatever, yeah. and he like trips. He's like, what is that? A deer? Yeah. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. I don't, don't, don't want to know. <laughs> Do I smell cookies? I don't know. Don't tell me. <laughs> it's just awesome. That's I, I love that one. Absolutely. Yeah, Mike. What do you think of? Um, Christmas on How I Met Your Mother. I love it. I I can't think of any other episodes aside oh. from uh, uh, from How Lily Stole Christmas. I, yeah. I th- what comes to mind is uh, Three Days of Snow, but it, that's more of a New Year's episode. Yeah, and that's that's just more of a um, what's it called? Like just more of a winter weather episode. But yeah. there was also um, two that I want to point out. Is one was um, I just looked at the title. I can't remember it. Um, Crap. Anyway, uh, oh, um, 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 false positive, where they think that Lily oh, and Marshall yeah. are pregnant, and it's not really a Christmas episode, but there's that kind of that running joke where they're going to see It's a Wonderful Life, and uh, Ted has the Christmas themed movie snack, which is just a big gingerbread house. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> which, if you, if uh, I, I heard on the the High Metro Mother podcast that they do. Um, that that was just a complete afterthought, and they like they commended the the extra or the um um the set design people or or, or their their team who created that because it was just kind of all on, on the fly. They're like, oh well, why don't why don't they bring a Christmas themed movie snack? And then like this is while they're in production of the episode, and they're like, why doesn't Ted bring a gingerbread house? So then. Uh, they they like called up their people and they're like, hey, we need a gingerbread house like today, <laughs> and they just threw it together and it, I mean it looked great. Um, yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, so there's uh there's that and then there's also one of my favorite episodes of the series actually, Symphony of Illumination. You guys remember that? No. Uh, nope. Is that where? Well, what happens? <laughs> Robin, is, Robin is sad. Yeah. And then uh, is that the episode where Robin is sad? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, uh, and te- uh, she said this, she says to Ted that she doesn't need his help. Yeah. Or she doesn't need him to make her feel better. And then he, of course, does the does the house up. 
or does the apartment up to make her happy? Right. It's the episode oh, that starts yeah. out with her with her telling her hypothetical kids like this is how I met the how I met your how I met your father and it's basically how she thinks she's pregnant um with uh, um Barney's kid but then she finds out that she can't have kids and she's the whole episode she's dealing with this and she doesn't want to tell the gang about it so she's like it just turns out that I'm not going to be an Olympic pole vaulter or whatever like that. Right. Um <laughs> and then the whole episode is just this downer episode where she's she's like that, but then it kind of it kind of comes back up where, where she's she realizes that um she's like like Ted Ted does that for her and she realizes that like all of her friends are really great and all that and then the end of the episode is future Ted having a um like the 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 voiceover saying something like yeah your aunt Robin was never never became a pole vaulter but um. She was. She did all these things and all that stuff. And the one thing that she never was was alone. And I thought that was just a really nice way to yeah. end the episode. That is nice. Good one. Yeah. So. So yeah. Um, Does that wrap it up? I think it might. Yeah, um, I think that, that was a do it. good episode. We brought a lot it of was. stuff up. Yeah, we did. Yep. Um, we're gonna forego potpourri because we're gonna record. We're going right into recording our Christmas movie episodes, which, if you're listening to this on the day that it drops, will be released this Friday. And if not, just ignore that and go to our iTunes page or ozpodcast.com <laughs> and look up uh, the next episode. Um, yeah, I, I'll go ahead and bring us out. I guess. Do you, you guys have anything else you want to say? Wrap Maybe. it up. Merry Christmas. All right. Yeah. Merry Christmas, guys. Um, as always, you can find us on Twitter. I'm Matt at Obsessive Viewer. Tiny is at Obsessive Tiny. Mike is at I am Mike White. Um, we love hearing from you guys and all that. Also, find us on iTunes. Subscribe, review, rate us if that's if that is what you want to do. Um, and then also go to PodcastLand.com and vote for us for Podcast of the Month. We'd really appreciate that. Um, any fan mail or hate mail or anything like that can be directed to ovpodcast at gmail dot com. Also, if you have any, if you want to like leave us a audio message or whatever, just record it and send it to us as an attachment. And we'll throw it into an episode because we love hearing from you guys. No one's done that yet, and I kind of wish that they would. Uh-huh. Or just call yeah. Matt. His number is. Um, one. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, yeah, so. Um, <laughs> Also check out the You blog. reacted to that so much. <laughs> I it's like I don't want anyone to know my number. Um Yeah, and then also check out the blog, obsessiveviewer.com, where we're posting stuff. I'm pr- I promise you guys we're gonna post more in the in the new year. Um <laughs> Hey, uh, I mean, Tiny and I have been posting, so... You guys have been... Well, I've got other stuff going on. I'm, I've been kind of busy. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding yeah. with you. Um, and I do appreciate you guys like, stepping in for that. I really yeah, of course. appreciate that. We love um, it. Yeah. All right. Well, um, let's, get to, let's get to our next episode. Let's get to Christmas movies. How about that? Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Gushing, 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 gushing. What if you were a Jehovah's Witness that was merely pretending to be into Christmas, gathering clues and blending in to take down the holidays from within? You mean like a spy investigating? (laughs) Making it seem like I'm celebrating when actually I'm I'm infiltrating infiltrating Santa's operation? (laughs) Yoink! Going deep, cover past enemy lines, making everybody think I'm on the Christmas side. Rocking warm sweaters, hanging big ass lights. If the fat man can see me, yo, it's gotta look right. I watch all the TV specials that I never could. I'll even cry during the sad ones like James Bond would. And when the big night comes, it's time to set the James Bond movie. (laughs) Decker to play. And he'll come down the chimney and they will reach just him and me, but he won't know we're enemies because stop play sincere. Bring a trap like that. Help him tie, get on his lap and tell him he can come back every year. Because I am Jehovah's most secret witness, so I might have to dedicate my life to Christmas and act just like I love it till the day I die. A-P-E-D. <laughs> For Christmas, on the spectrum, none of your business. Thoughts too fast to comprehend, just want to do right. Bye, my friends. If years were seasons, this December would be the December of our December. More blueprints than Howard Hughes, but if there are blueprints, how do we choose? We have to be happy to get to the end. We have to save Christmas to save our friends. We have to save Christmas to save our friends. We have to save Christmas to save our friends. Hey guys! Oh, it's so great. Rapping? Yep. Ah, I love it. Um, what were we talking about? Look, this dude doesn't show up, we're definitely going to Applebee's, right? Because I'm getting in a fight no matter what they do, I'm telling you.